Yeah. So yeah, I watched Kill Bill. And that's entertainment. <laughs> that is how you recap your day. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to New Heights, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment, brought to you by our friends at Fireball. Fireball. The pound for pound, undisputed best shot in America. That is a fact. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, and we are Cleveland Heights High School graduates. That's right. I got my high school diploma. (laughs) Hey. And my college one from the University of Cincinnati, as well as my brother. New Heights comes to you Can every single to Wednesday, you? or we try and get. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. I earned, I earned my diplomas, Jason. Okay. New Heights comes to you every single Wednesday, or as uh, often as we can get them to you every single Wednesday. Schedules have been crazy, so uh, we appreciate you guys bearing with us if they uh, they come out a little tardy. But if you subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get this podcast uh, and follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S, um, we'll get updates to you when uh, we can't get them to you on time. Jason, why don't you get the people fired up and tell them what we got coming up, brother? Well, we got another great episode. Yee-hee! That's right. We got another great episode in the 2023 offseason. It is officially the offseason for the Philadelphia Eagles. Our OTAs oh. have ended. What? Not so officially over for the Kansas City Chiefs. You guys they got- are deep in their own mini camp. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about OTAs, Man, mini camps. Crazy. We're going to see how Travis did in his pitching redemption. All right, now. <laughs> and we're going to get to some of our favorite entries from the ocean. Drive Beer Bowl 2023. But first, as always, <laughs> new news. New news. Here we that go. Was, God damn, this guy. New news. Bad. Still a top two sports podcast, even without any actual football news to talk about. Man, man that's, that's impressive. Shout out to the 92 percenters, baby. Yeah, man. It's all thanks to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in each and every week. We love doing this show, but it is nothing. Without the 92 percenters. So, uh, yeah, thanks for subscribing, clicking that link bell. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just overall supporting the pod and, uh, your no dumb questions, everything you guys do. It's wonderful. All right. In case you missed it, we dropped a conversation with Charles Barkley. That's oh, right. Man. The one and only. I'm still, I still the round of that. mound. Chuck so go ahead and best. check that out if you want to. The Charles Barkley episode is up from last week. Um, what was your favorite part of the episode, Trev? Man, that's a good question. I would say just to hear his take on uh, on hockey or and other sports, um, kind of hear it, hear a professional's uh, view and um, take on you know the finals and uh, and and yeah. kind of the direction the league is going. Chuck is just so good, and he's and he's very versatile in terms of what he can talk about, man. So it, it's always fun to hear his unique uh, uh, point of view. For sure. No, I uh, I'm about to sneeze, so bear with me. <gasps> Sorry about that. All right, We're now. in the middle of a smoke blaze out here in Philadelphia. Still like, going, huh? No, nah, it's it's past. I'm just making right, excuses now. at this point. <laughs> I'm about to have a sneeze and fit. Oh, don't do it again. Okay, I'm good. Nice. What was your favorite part? My favorite part was uh, by far what was behind him the entire time. The uh, 92 Dude, Olympic Dream Team electric. American flag signed by all of the members of the Dream Team. Are you kidding me? That was the coolest amazing piece of sports artifact. memorabilia I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, as well as all of the other stories I mentioned, whether it was from Mike Tyson, uh, you know, to uh, all of <laughs> you the mentors. En- you enjoyed that Mike Tyson story. Yeah. The Mike Tyson story was cool. Uh, obviously not a fan of uh, the amount of toking <laughs> Mike was doing. But uh, I think my favorite stories were actually the ones of uh you know the guys like Moses and in the in the veterans that were in his locker room offering so cool, how to be a pro how to navigate uh the life changing amount of money that he was uh, coming in contact with as a young player um as well as uh to go on a diet and uh, be in shape i thought that there was some really really good stuff from chuck as always he is as the always. best sports media personality and uh, he did not hold back in that interview no, we didn't he never does does he no he doesn't he only knows one speed and yo chuck. and that's chuck speed all right now all righty we're gonna get to the ocean drive beer bowl you guys Dude, are killing getting, it man this it's is getting, getting exciting intense. This is getting intense. It's getting exciting. Um, entries are rolling in, and we're going to get to some of our favorites right now. Let's you check out it. some of these ones. All right. First video we're going to get to 
is the Blades of Glory video. Let's pop Electric. this video out and see what these guys are about. You're going to like to see these ones, 92 percenters. It's Look at the outfits right away, oh just killing God. it. Dude. You can't ask for anything better than this. One shotgunning. My fellow Americans, we're gathered here today on 37th Street, beautiful, sunny, Seattle City. This is my partner, Jimmy McElroy. I'm Chaz Michael Michaels, and we are Team Fire Nice. That's right, baby. We're out here today getting preparation for the New Heights Beer Bowl 2023. No, clearly in CIO while they're filming this video. So uh, it's they got some home field advantage if they do make it in. I love the leotards. I like the theme. It's funny. It's creative. They demonstrate beer drinking ability. They demonstrate beer drinking skills. Mm -hmm. They clearly want it. Yeah. And uh, these are the type of entrants we want in this thing. Look right at the now. flexibility. Look at the 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 nimbleness the nimbleness the nimbleness oh my gosh good walking good energy good vibes good wigs i just Nailed love the it. energy man i'm yeah. here for the energy it's great next one we got is from Lindsay mateo uh it's team green men <laughs> listen fire up baby i didn't know how many female applicants we were going to get in this is actually but, it's quite the edit to dude, be honest I they mean, they, were, they went all this. over the shore, got some got, different views of the shore, got the Rocky yep. theme going, got Jason Rocky Speech theme going. going. I mean, they just set a speed record. Holy shit. How fast was she running? <laughs> Flip cup. Oh, my gosh. One try. One try. I'm in. I'm in on the green men. Love it. Next one. Team Denim. This one Team, is this just. This is the one. He asks in there, if you guys want somebody to bring the heat, we're the ones. And you know what? Team Denim, I want you guys to bring the heat. I want I that thing to be on fire. The Canadian tuxedo, they started off hot from the get-go with a Stone Cold Steve Austin chug. Jason, you ever re you ever you ever had a little fun in a, in a Canadian tuxedo? Of course. Who hasn't? <laughs> did you go did you go cut off the arms and and below the knees? I've definitely worn jorts with uh cutoffs. Um I don't know if I ever cut the sleeves off of a denim, denim shirt. Uh, the tornado chug. Listen, I mean, this fits the bill. Tornado right? chugs. Tornado this, chugs are electric. You're bringing this, the heat and doing tornado chugs. That's a that's I mean, that's, that's a valid entry right there. This this is. The, I mean, he just bashed a beer open with his fucking skull. This guy's savage. And this guy's about to rip the top open. That's a Landon Dickerson move. You know, these guys are clearly experts. They clearly know how to drink beer. They certainly <laughs> look the part. I mean, hairy chests out, guts out. Yeah. There is zero repercussions for any of these beers that they are down in and annihilating. Das Boot Chug to finish it off. Team Denim, they might be the favorites. I'm not gonna lie. Out of out of everything submitted, these guys are some There's just straight up ringers. degenerates. Guys I mean, absolute <laughs> degenerates. <laughs> it screams. Team Degenerate Denims. And then here we go. Last team that we're gonna show you guys, the He Brew. I'm telling you, I think we're only liking this team because of the name. Dude, what this is, I mean, it's electric. Dude. Absolutely Talk electric. Talk about the inclusiveness of this best beer name, bowl right now. We got name women. Got so far. We got fat guys. We got figure skaters. We got Hebrews. We got it all. Beer Bowl 2023 <laughs> might be the most diverse sporting event you're going to see this year. So get ready. It's coming in hot. Hi, I'm Corey Mazur. And I'm Mark Goldberg. And we are the Hebrews. Hebrews. <laughs> Look at that tutu. God, this guy's got a tutu on. <laughs> there we go. No tornado chug, but a solid chug nonetheless. He's down on that thing like Abraham. You know what I mean? There we go. Ah. Oh, Stein chug. <laughs> Get it. That's the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Team, team Hebrews, I'm in on the baby. Hebrews. Man, Hebrews got good up, energy. That fired me up. I can't wait. If they're not in, I hope they. I hope we freaking have them there. We need hey, them man. there. I got to meet yeah. those guys. Love it. Love the creativity. Um, love the name. I love it. Hey, so the, these are the types of submissions we're looking for. It is not closed yet. It is not over. You still have till June 20th to submit an application. Um, and we're going to select the top 16. Uh, we're, we're getting this thing rolling. The submissions are coming in hot. Nice. We already have enough to fill out the uh, brackets. 
But yeah. we're trying to make sure that as many people that think that they are, have a chance and are up to the snuff, we're trying to give you a chance to get into this thing. So submit your videos to at New Heights Show or email us at newheightshow at gmail.com. Send you know submissions it. to New Heights Show or email at newheightshow at gmail.com. Again, you got to be 21 years or older. And um, all the proceeds are going to Eagles Autism Foundation. And yep. I'm pretty sure we got a link up there if uh, if you want to donate to Eagles Autism Foundation. Um, just even just feeling like you want to give back. Yep. If you're feeling like you're giving back, but also the top 30 donors will get on the courtside seats in the beer bowl and some VIP access to all the guests in attendance. Courtside beer bowl seats. That's right. Floor tickets are the best. Hey, people thought floor NBA tickets were the best. Wait till you see floor beer bowl tickets. <laughs> You're in the It's going to be electric. Donations have already skyrocketing. We're already up 20,000 from the uh, origination of this event. Um, that's right. All the money is going to uh, EAF. Eagles Autism Foundation, except the 50000 that the winner of Beer Bowl is going to get. Uh, that's going to the winner of Beer Bowl. So Sheesh. if you think you're up to the task and you want $50,000 and you have a partner and you have a good team theme and you can drink beer really well. What? And you're going to be in or around Seattle City, New Jersey on June 28th this year. What? Send us a reason. Why we should include you. Hey, can't wait to see what you guys come up with. You got a week left, baby. Let's keep them coming in. Boom. Let's keep it fucking moving. No dumb questions. This is where we answer all of your guys is the 92 percenters uh, suggestions on, um, you know, questions that you might have that uh, that can't be dumb because there's no dumb questions. There's just dumb people. It's uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing another run because <laughs> I uh, feeling a little slow today. Mm, 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 All right, now nah. let's keep this thing when, moving. What's whenever that? you feel like you're slow, just try and act like you're gonna poop really hard, go, ah! and then get going again. It, you'd be surprised if you activate the core. The core is the origination of everything, including thoughts and mouth movement and posture. Just activate the core, and you're ready to podcast. That's what wall drills taught me. You hold off and drive my man. <laughs> you said you don't do fucking wall drill. Oh, you just don't work on your stride on the wall. That's I work you, on my stride. You do wall sits still? What is this, gym class? I do do wall sits. Wall sits are really good for you. Better than wall <laughs> strides. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. Moving on to no dumb questions, baby. Oh. Let's, uh, let's get to some no dumb questions. We're United hey. Two Percenters. Ask us. Some of the not dumbest questions ever, because there's oh. no dumb questions. There's just dumb people. And no dumb questions is brought to you by our friends at Accelerator. Hey, might have had a few of these today. <sighs> when do you not have a few? It's so Honestly, electric. It's one of those things where I drink so many. Yeah. That I should endorse it. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, so shout out to the uh, Accelerator we, Energy Drink team. Why did we think of that? Man, I'll tell you what. Hopefully they're listening. Shout out to the gang. Hey, shout out to Natural Thermogenics. If only, yeah, if only I had a enormous fridge behind me. Full of <laughs> <laughs> Cha-ching! <laughs> All right, now. Hey, Kind of a dumb question from waxing the Buick. Waxing the Buick. Well, I do love old school Buicks, but uh, have you ever waxed a car? No, Jason. I have never grew up in the same house you did. No, we did. We we only we only totaled our cars. Okay, we didn't wax them. I just feel like that was a thing that we saw in movies growing up, and I don't think I've ever seen anybody wax a car. Is that something that like used to happen? I mean, I, I get my cars kind of waxed down now. Like I got well, my get, old school. You go to like the cleaners, now. and I, I feel like that's different. Though no, we're talking I, about like somebody waxing a car, and they're like, yeah. there like are movies the, getting the wheels. Yeah, like Mr. Miyagi just had my son, uh, my soft freaking Daniel Danielson just waxing his car. This is like true. that was a normal thing to have done in your driveway. Yeah. Well, clearly this man has waxed his Buick before. So sorry huh. for the terrible quality, and I didn't know. 
if I'm the first one to dig this up, but I'd mm. love to know the circumstances that led Jason rocking the Mohawk in college because right. the white Mr. T here usually doesn't dress up or do anything crazy to his hair. I need some insight from the I, man himself. Jason, why don't you give everybody a little insight on what this is? Right. First of all, I do stuff crazy to my hair all the time. I've changed my look up all true. over the place. But uh, the real question is, why wouldn't I have a mohawk in 2007 University of Cincinnati summer first year of college guy? That's second year of college, dude. That's no, that's first year. Second. You were not 60 your first year. I was 60 as a linebacker, which that is, is a sign. That is fucking That disgusting. is a sign. <laughs> That's disgusting. If I didn't see me getting moved to O-line or D-line, I should have seen it coming the moment they gave me that jersey. Um, no, this is actually my you freshman can't year. Even wear number sixty <laughs> at linebacker. <laughs> the reason I have a mohawk is because they hazed all of the freshmen and they shaved my head into a mohawk. <laughs> so that's why I have a mohawk. It was a kind of like, uh, I don't know if democratic is the right word, but it was like a, a, a light hazing where I had the choice and I was like, uh, I guess I'll have a mohawk and they gave me a mohawk. I always thought Mr. T looked pretty sweet. They actually, I think, shaved stuff in the side of my heads. Oh, yeah, head, yeah, yeah. And then I... Just I think I remember that. that you see on one side, like yes. it was a helmet, like and then, and then 60 I just on the other that side to for the make for it cleaner that. cut, so mom could get a decent looking picture on I picture guess. day. Yeah, this might be. I don't know if that's in the my freshman year, or maybe spring ball my freshman year, but either way, yeah, that's where that came from. <laughs> that's a beefed up. Dude. That's a beefed up linebacker right there, dude. Dude, bring it back, man. Bring it back. The ball, uh, yeah. Bring the mohawk back. It's definitely not coming back. Kylie didn't even like me having a mullet. She's definitely not going to go for the mohawk. Does she like the the buzz cut that I gave you? Yeah, she's okay with it. She doesn't like that you gave it to me, but she's okay with the buzz cut. <laughs> Wait, what? Kylie? The reason she's more upset about it is that we let her, we let you use your, your ball trimmers to cut it. So no. she's no. not happy that we... <laughs> no, I don't. Do you not want to say this? I don't fucking... I would never have touched your head with my Stop fucking trimmers. ball trimmer, dude. I saw those trimmers. Every man in America knows what those trimmers are used for in somebody dude, else's bathroom. Those are high end clippers, Stop. dude. Stop. This is ridiculous. Unbelievable, <laughs> Kylie. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Moving on to OK communication. OK communication. I like this. Like this. Five forty. Hey. OK communication. Five forty. Hey. What was it like living with Big Craig in college? Craig Barbetter. <laughs> Big Craig Barbetter. That's a great. I mean, you know what? It was amazing. It was. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. How would we describe Craig Parmenter to somebody that doesn't know Craig Parmenter? I don't know. If that's like um, possible. He's a brewmaster. Well, now he is, but yeah. this is Co Craig in college. He was not a brewmaster in college before he got into brewing. There's some Craig's got some fucking stories. Picture, dude, like the most stereotypical person from Jersey you can imagine, but like a tall, redheaded version of it. Gosh, man, that's all. I I think Craig that's about was, all. And I can he do. was a. L we can't talk about this. <laughs> Fuck, I love Craig, man. Oh, I got to miss that guy. Hey, but he makes beer now, so. Woo. Well, to answer your question, it was amazing. And it was. Craig, it was great. miss you. Craig was in our house. He's an offensive tackle. He brought nonstop energy and excitement and some of the funniest goddamn moments I've ever had in my life to our house. I don't know who this is that asked this. Who the fuck knows <laughs> the Big fuck Craig? Who knows Craig? Dude, Craig Parmenter has some funny stories. I don't even know what we can share. We can't. I can't put the part about I, You can't do that. We're going to take our biggest character, match it up with your biggest character, and then you're going to make just a, a, a sitcom movie-like <laughs> relationship. Fuck, that's going to... Bullwinkers let it come out. <laughs> Oh my God, I was just passed out from laughing so hard. 
Craig once gave me a We can't put this in. We can't put any of that in, but. Yeah, maybe you can just put us saying we can't put any of that in and that, Craig, we miss you and we love you. And it was a blast yeah. living with He's you, guys. Please keep sending in those no dumb questions uh, so that we have something to talk about here in the offseason. And That's thank right. you to our friends at Accelerator. Hey! For fueling me with up. energy in this segment. Uh, we should really get endorsed by these things. That'd be great. All righty. We also need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking all the time, and that is Accelerator Active Energy. Ooh, it's so Good. If you've been looking for something with zero sugar, yeah, that gives you sustained energy, yeah, gets the metabolism going, duh, and gives you the enhanced focus that you need to attack your day, please, oh, success please. and enjoy. Well, you got to check out Accelerator Active Sounds Energy. Good. I'm in. I got berry lemonade over here, baby. Berry lemonade. That's the same one I got. It is very good. It's you know berry and it's lemonade. It's very, so it's very got good. berries and lemonade. Accelerator Active Energy is available at Target, Walmart, Meyer, 7 Eleven, and Quick Trip. It's moving on up. Moving on up. Moving on up. Our next partner is AG1. Who in the? Yeah. Well, that's the daily nutritional supplement that uh, supports whole body health. You might not believe this, but I actually drink my AG1 every day. Every day? Why That's would right. you Why would you drink it every day? Because Jason? it's foundational and nutritional and covers okay. all of my nutritional basis. Mm -hmm. I gave AG1 a try as an NFL player. We got a lot going on and I needed this single way to get it all in. Well, that makes sense. So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free <laughs> one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with just your first purchase, ladies and gentlemen. If it's free, it's for me. Ooh, nice. Go to drinkag1.com slash new heights. That's drinkag1.com slash new heights. Check it out. Check it out. Out of the house. Hey! Out of the house. That's right. We got out of the house. Well, Travis got out of the house. Yeah. As dude. you guys might have seen this week, Travis keeps getting out of the house. <laughs> but first, before we get to out of the house, <laughs> this week's out of the house is brought to you by our friends at Pupperoni. Mm. Pupsters. The pups. That's right. It's great to leave the house. But when you Return home. <laughs> Be your best friend's best friend. Baloo! Baloo! <laughs> Bubba! Everybody say hello to the world's fluffiest dog. Look at this. He looks like Alf. You guys, you remember Alf? I, th I don't know if my dog knows his name. I'll tell you what. He Bubba just doesn't enjoy. know he's about to get a treat. Bubba enjoys some good pepperoni. You want any treat? You want a treat? You want to get fired up? You want a treat? Huh? Dude, here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, you finally got him? Let's see if I can get him in the camera. Let's see if you can get him in the camera. Him. That fucking horse, he's as big as you. Watch out, there's a dinosaur. Oh, 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 he almost took my fingers off. Oh, my God, he loves these things. Yeah, who doesn't? Look at look at Bubba's tooth. He's got tanines. Nice. Hell teeth. yeah. Well, man, I'd hate to be a gopher in your yard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting, getting stabbed by a sword, man. Shout out to Pepperoni. Trav, redemption pitch. Yeah, Tell us dude. about it. Yeah, you already Did know. You well, uh, yeah, the Royals were nice enough to to have our entire team out. Um, it nice. was Chief Day at the uh, at the K, baby. Did you practice? I got a few throws in uh, right before I went out, but this time it was actually from like uh, a longer distance, kind of on a mound in the uh, in the nice. batting cage underneath. So I got a few throws in. Found out it'd probably be better if I did a two seamer than a four seamer. Four seamer kind of gets caught in the hand a little bit for me nowadays really? so i went two seaver so it just kind of like come off on the just slip right out of there slip right out of there so i didn't just yank one you know what i mean get caught on those places and just yank, see, yank it that's just experience catching up i like that yeah, you know what i'm saying gotta make adjustments you know and then i got a shout from my guy rick sutcliffe the red baron um i'm not sure if you uh if you know who rick sutcliffe is i've heard Big the Sut. name sut yeah he's a cy young winner um nice 
Chicago Cubs, Cleveland at the time, Indians. There's actually uh, mom and dad's, one of mom and dad's kind of, they knew who he was. He's a big Indians uh, pitcher back cool. in the day. Uh, Kansas City guy. Met him uh, in spring training, playing for the Cubs. Uh, not playing for the Cubs, or coaching for the Cubs. Okay. Uh, was throwing fly, fly balls to my buddy. And I see this coach coming over. I'm like, yeah, well, and that's where the fun ends because we're being a disturbance during their practices. <laughs> and uh, he got fired up because he's a Kansas City guy. And um, and yeah, the Chiefs, uh, we had just came off of our first Super Bowl in 2019 uh, nice. when I met him. So it's uh, having some fun with him uh, every spring training nowadays. And uh, I still got to get to Chicago with you, brother. But he gave me a shout before I went out there uh, at the K uh, earlier this week and kind of gave me a... Um, uh, uh, a tip here and there. He said, "I my stride was too long. I don't have like the, uh, I don't have the uh, the grip and everything in my shoes to you know, to really open my stride up and and throw a throw a fastball." So he was like, "Shorten the stride up, and uh, and that'll let you, you know, what I mean, get to the play a little easier." And so I did that, and I slid. Slipped. Dude. You saw yeah, that, you yeah, s- yeah. I I, sl- I slipped I right was- into a strike, dude, because I got real lucky. I got real Dude, lucky. That's the question. Did you have to readjust when you felt yourself slipping? I held it higher. I held really? it higher. It was like a hook shot. I was like falling down left, and it was like a little hook shot. If you watch it, it's not a two seam. I kind of pulled the string with my finger, and it was like a little cutter, just kind of cut in there a little bit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was like a friggin' hook shot from the uh, 60 feet away. Well, maybe that'll teach you not to wear, uh, you know, shoes just to look good. Yeah, man. I you know, that's what you get for LeBron dressing James. up instead of just those wearing Bronny some twos, man. Those, dude, those if you would have LeBron James, you know, all stars, man, those things are fucking you, sweet. If you would have just went with the New Balance, wouldn't have been no issues. Yeah, because New Balance has fucking grip. <laughs> it just goes for traction. What? They're tennis shoes. So you got to grab on clay. Do you not know anything clay? about tennis? <laughs> you think? <laughs> they play on clay. <laughs> what happened is I got really lucky, but redemption is redemption. I threw a freaking strike. And there I appreciate the Royals for showing me where to throw the ball. Um, and shout out to Bobby Wood Jr. for being brave enough to get behind the plate uh, and, and catch the ball, man. Um, and uh, my sincere apology to the uh, Cleveland Guardians and the entire organization, the entire <laughs> city of Cleveland, for embarrassing myself and the city on opening day. The Guardians didn't win that game, and uh, you know what? I felt like it was my fault. I felt like I started it off real bad. Um, uh-huh. But at the end of the day, I'm I'm one for one, baby. So <laughs> I might I mean, need one. I might need one more just so I get over five. Uh, yeah, five hundred. I mean, I was more impressed. I'm going to be honest. I'm not doing. I'm not a homer because you're your brother. I was more impressed that you were able to get up on the mound, slip, and still st- throw a strike. I slipped than into that anything one. else. I mean, I. It was that destiny. was impressive. That was a was very. Destiny. It was a very good sign of athleticism to be able to course correct like that. So I'll, I'll give that to you. The first pitch was shit, but that one was pretty good. Um, <laughs> other baseball news. Are we ready to believe A.J. Brown can play in the MLB? Let me see this. Did you watch the video? Let me see this. Dude, check this video out. He's got a good-looking sway. I, I mean, I knew he no, played. I saw, him, I saw him taking I he, some cuts. Yeah, I mean, I knew he played baseball in college, but. No, no I, I mean, don't think so. I don't like it. I mean, it's a good cut. No, it's not. No, it's not. I got a better cut than that. I'm kidding. You got a better swing that than is that. That's a really. No, I, what? I, can't, I don't, have, butter, I don't have any shoulder muscles. No. <laughs> I mean, it's a good swing. I mean, the guy's throwing 40 miles an hour, so it's not that impressive. But, I mean, it's. He looks comfortable. Hey, yeah. He looks comfortable, and that's gone. He's looking the part. Was that? Oh no, that was warning track power right there. Warning track. Yeah. Yeah. He's only got warning track power. <laughs> <laughs> AJ Brown is the strongest receiver in the National yeah, Football he's League. He's definitely got he's, more than warning track power. He's throwing in that upper deck right there. I think we need uh, me pitching versus uh, AJ Brown batting, dude. It's the only way to settle this. If I mean, you can it, get a hit off me, then he could probably you know get a hit off of. A MLB pitcher. He's definitely getting a hit off of you. That doesn't settle you think anything. He's getting a hit off of me, Travis. You threw the ball hard one time, and it went Listen, directly into the dirt. It's a little different when you know forty miles an hour is coming right down the pipe. You don't know where this thing's coming, dog. This you thing can't be coming even right at throw you. hard because you don't have a labrum. Damn it! <laughs> you can't pitch anymore, Travis. Give the people what they want, Jason. <laughs> they want to see it. 
They want to see one on one. AJ, let's make this happen. I'm not about to call this dude AJ Brown out. He's he will literally take me yard in the <laughs> for first sure. Pitch for sure. I mean, we could still do it though. It'd be a fun video. Yeah, as Travis was getting out of the house, um, I was stuck in the house. I don't know if you know this, Travis, but uh, Canada has been ablaze. And it's unfortunate, man. So I had to figure out something to do all day. Um, Trav, do you like to take a guess what I did all day? I'm going to take a guess that you. I don't know. What'd you do? I watched the Twilight series. Do you know what that is? Nope. You never heard of the Twilight series? Is that a book? It is a book. It's also. But you a movie. watched it, so now it's a There's movie. five of them. It's absolutely terrible. <laughs> no wonder i don't know it yeah it's well it's also for little girls and for some reason a full-grown man at 35 years old cho- chose to watch this entire uh entire. uh series um yeah i don't know what spawned this but i asked kylie if she wanted to watch the first one and i watched the first one and it was absolutely terrible and then i continued to watch the four other ones after that and shocker, they were all bad. But um, yeah, it's a teenage love story. Uh, starts out like they oh, all do. That's my favorite. Yeah, it starts out like all these teenage love stories do. You know, high school girl falls in love with a hundred and nine year old vampire who still looks like an eighteen year old, and nobody asks questions about that. And yeah, so that guy's name's Edward, and the woman's name is Bella, and they have like a very awkward love relationship where she kind of looks at him funny and he looks at her funny, but they clearly don't know how to talk to each other yet. I don't know what this question is, but are you team Edward or team Jacob? I'm team. uh, This movie shouldn't exist. (laughs) You had to have at least one part where you're like, all right, that was kind of a cool little part. No, it's all terrible. It's just just bad across the board. Like the acting is bad. I'm trying to describe it to somebody who hasn't seen it. That would so understand. you watched ten hours of yeah. There no way you were in your phone. You didn't watch this. I mean, I was in my phone a little bit, but I was I was dedicated to it. I was pot committed on it. I mean, it's it's a love story with vampires and werewolves. It feels like somebody, whoever wrote this, was like, okay, how can I appeal I think to I know the what people you're talking about now? Now to the people that vampires. wrote uh, Goosebumps, how can I apply Goosebumps Ooh. to See? real, mm. some like type of like love story and make millions of dollars off of it? And then they made Twilight. Goosebumps was a bangers. And I mean, I, bangers, I mean, man. I guess they just got a bunch of good looking middle schoolers and made a video out of it. So she falls in love with Edward. Dude, I come on. Who's a vampire. Jason. And we don't need to go over your recap. And she has a thing for him. And that goes back and forth. As much fun as you had watching it, we're having as much fun listening to you describe this shit. And then the second movie happens. You want to get to some bold topics? You find out that there's werewolves in this movie out of nowhere. So in the second movie, Bella really still loves Edward, but she starts leading this guy Jacob on like he's got some chance and he doesn't fucking stand a chance. You should have just went outside and breathed in all that smoke, man. So they he starts falling for her and Edward starts to get upset and says he's going to kill himself. And he's going to go into the light where a bunch of people are. And that's going to give him away because everybody knows when vampires go in light, their skin's like sparkles. But the Veltori, the bad, they, these are the big, the police officers of the vampire world. They'll kill him. So he, he's about to go in there and the saves him. So he survives that one. And then. Flash forward to the oh! final movie. And Bella gets Jason. pregnant. Bella Stop. gets pregnant. They Jason. he married. Just call me whenever you're ready. And I'm not the, doing this to myself. They have a baby, and the baby's half vampire, half human. I can just see that. And you're keep looking but at you can't give if you're a human, you can't give birth to a vampire. So the so she's about to die. So then Edward has to turn her into a vampire to save her life. And then when she gets saved, the evil. Vampires. Well, they're, they're, they're coming to kill the baby, the Cullens and all the other vampires to saw, and the werewolves. Oh, so I forgot to mention these va- these vampires also have powers. But anyways, so then they let Bella and the the half the half man half vampire baby live, and that's Twilight. 
I'll uh, I'll tell you what. Let's get into some bold topics to wrap hey, up the week in the topics. NFL offseason. Dude, I had to That's... counteract it though. I had to counteract it. I watched the other. I watched both Kill Bill movies just to get my. Ooh, I needed to watch okay. something else that had like a female lead, but was more like. What is it? Uh, the uh, Bumblebee. So yeah, I want to kill Bill. And that's entertainment. <laughs> that is how you recap your day. Uh, and Kill Bill's fantastic. So if you're thinking of either watching <laughs> Twilight or Kill Bill, definitely recommend Kill Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to some bold topics, Here baby. We go. NFL offseason OTA recap. How about hey. it? Eagles and Chiefs are officially done with OTAs. We are not. Kylie's yelling at me. Apparently, oh, nap time is not the time to do Bumblebee yeah. at the top of your mouth. <laughs> Eagles and Chiefs are officially done with OTAs. This guy is reckless. <laughs> oh, man. For the people that don't know, what are OTAs, Jason? Organized team activities, them. a part of OSP, which is organized or off-season season program. Organized season off-season program. Organized team activities. And uh, how are they different from uh, mini camps, training camps, et cetera? Well, they're not mandatory. All right now. So, yeah. All right. Here's the gist. The offseason works like this, folks. You're off until OSP starts. You have two to three weeks of OSP, offseason program. Initial phase, which is essentially just lifting weights. You don't do anything but come in and lift weights for an hour and a half. And None of it's mandatory. Bit. Then OTA start, organize team activities, and that's when you're allowed to start doing on-field things with your coaches, drills, actual football things. You meet with your coaches, all that stuff. And then you have what Travis is doing right now, which is a mini camp, which is mandatory. And um, you're there for – it's pretty much replicating what training camp is. You're there from – I don't know. When do you get there, Trav? Eight? From like eight to yep, six, eight fifteen to about yeah five ish, four ish, yep. five ish, and you're you have helmets on and you're actually playing against other guys and stuff like that. So right that's now. the gist of what the difference is between OSP, OTAs, mini camps. What's really been interesting is how much this has changed. Yeah. Uh, you know, the PA continually fights to make our lives easier. Thanks, PA. Um, and uh, when COVID happened, that kind of put teams in a little bit of an awkward spot because you couldn't do a lot of this offseason program. You couldn't do any of it. Yeah, so they cut back and on a lot of it. We still ended up having a successful season, so the PA used that to say, hey, I don't know that all that stuff is necessary that we do in the offseason. So now the OTAs, minicamps, and uh, uh, OSP in general has shrunk significantly. Matter of fact, we don't even – do you guys do like 11-on-11 11 11 still? Oh yeah. See, we don't we don't even do eleven on eleven anymore. We had it's two all team tiers today. we'll we do seven on tiers. seven, but O line D line does nothing going up against each other, which I like because I don't know that you I just don't think you can gain much from watching O line and D line without shoulder pads on. I feel no, like it's, it's it's unioned up. It's not yeah, it's not full full throttle. It's unioned up. I think Coach Reed, you know, gives them a, a certain pace and a certain tempo, you know, to kind of keep everybody healthy and things right. like that. Um, well, and, and scout. I mean, you can't, but you can't help it. There's still competition, and people are going to be competitive, and they want to win. It is what it is. Yeah, they want to make the team. I just get upset that like there's like scouts and people that evaluate OTAs, and like, man, this guy's going to be really good. I can't tell you how many times guys look like they're going to be great coming out of OTAs, and then you put pads on. You're like, oh, turns out like, yeah, the guy's not very good. No, I'm with you, and I um, I I love OTAs, man. I love OTAs. I love being around the the building in the off season. I genuinely enjoy seeing the direction and help driving the direction of where the offense is going during the right. season. Yep. And um, I know that when I'm here in OTAs, uh, people that are calling plays and creating plays are creating them for the people that are there. Right. 
So uh, and are seeing the people that are there running those plays and that no gains doubt. confidence or, you know, creates question on things. So I um yep. I love being around there, going to work with the guys, kind of being that uh being that uh, voice of reason to a lot of the younger guys that uh that are new to the uh, situation or new to the league or just new to the team. And um yeah, I uh, I find a lot of uh and and it gives me a routine, man. It gives yep. me a routine. I am not a big uh scheduler and like organized human being and what OTAs <gasps> in the off season does is it gives me a regimen and I like to, you know, stay on stay on top of, you know, just becoming a better person, better player, baby. Yeah, I mean, I think you just summarized it perfectly. That's what the OTAs is for, in my opinion. I think you're back around the guys. You're back to forging the relationships that enable a team to be successful and have confidence in one another. You're installing and running new things that you're getting ready to do for the upcoming season. So everything Travis just said, um, and you're f- figuring things out. You're trying to correct problems from the year before. You're installing plays. Like, hey, remember when that happened? How could we fix and prevent that from happening? Or, hey, we did this a lot. What would happen if we tried this out? These are the times to have a lot of these discussions and to iron these things out before training camp starts. And that process is going to get continue to happen throughout training camp, the preseason, and even in the season. But the more that dialogue happens between player to player, player to coach, the more – you guys hang out with each other in the cafeteria. All that stuff ultimately makes a difference. You know, I I think that there's some good things that have come out of you know, COVID and OTAs getting a little bit less of like physical and banging. Dude, I remember our first, big, yeah, right? my first couple of years. It was full go. With, it with was no nine on, there was on. nine on seven. Yeah. Yeah. We're and, in um, inside inside run game. <laughs> it's just like, bro, I don't even what are we doing? But I think <laughs> I I do think that COVID also exposed how much does happen in that period? And, you know, I, for me, and I'm sure you agree after, um, you know, you just shared what you thought was poor. But I, I think that it's fun being out there. It's fun being back around the guys. Oh, yeah. You enjoy it. It might be the most fun part of the season, to be honest. It's, I mean, outside of as, playing games, yeah, like we're all out here having fun. It's pretty lax. I don't want to say it's lackadaisical, but, yeah, we're out there having fun and Testing things out, and knowing that the the bullets aren't flying quite yet. Well, um, never not working, baby. Trav, you had a mini camp press conference. I so did. I so did. I had my uh, press What'd conference today. Actually, I just answered uh, answered a few questions. Uh, somebody asked me about retirement, mm-hmm. um, and uh, that's not happening anytime soon. What'd you say? You said you're playing till the wheels fall yeah, off. Yeah, I'm playing till the wheels fall off. I'll tell you what. You mentioned you had a great point, um, and this is the luxury of being. A little brother and having <laughs> an older brother go Luxury. through all of these uh, all these steps and phases in in a football career before you, um, you get to hear the the wisdom that uh, that he has, you know. And I think you uh, you hit it on the head, man. You're we're we're both going to miss playing this freaking game when it's all done with. So I think we should go ahead and you know pl- play until the wheels fall off, you know, because uh, I know uh, I know playing this freaking game I, I i have too much fun doing this man yeah uh well when you do decide to retire are you gonna go on a farewell tour i mean that's fitting right <laughs> <laughs> um i know oh. no it'll be on the spot i'll catch everybody off guard it'll just be right then and there nice i will say this i've been so fortunate to be healthy enough to play until i'm 33 years old Hopefully, 34 brings that same fortune into my life. And um, as long as I'm healthy enough to get out there and make a difference and help a team win, man, I don't see myself hanging it up anytime uh, before that. So, All right. That answers that. Hey, Trav. Hey. Hey. Huh. Got to take a quick time out. Brief time out. With what? We got to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Pup Peroni. <laughs> The original beef flavor dog treats made for your most valuable pup. And while your dog can't experience the thrill of visiting the White House, (laughs) and while your dog can't experience the thrill of throwing out the first pitch, you can inject that same excitement into their life by feeding them the irresistible pepperoni treats. So bring to the table more than just belly rubs. Be your best friend's best friend all season long with the real meat taste of pepperoni original beef dog treats. To learn more, go to pepperoni.com. That's 
P-U-P-P-E-R-O-N-I dot com. P-U-P-P-E-R-O-N-I dot com. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get back to the show in a second. But right now, we need to shout out one of our partners. Wait, which one? Fireball. <laughs> Fireball takes any event to the next level. And I'm talking about any event. Like getting out the house or watching Twilight with your daughter. Mm. Or throwing the first pitch at a baseball game. Woo! Man, I can tell you the one thing. Fireball would have made Twilight a lot more entertaining. Fireball's iconic cinnamon flavor tastes fire and goes down easy, making it the Smooth. ultimate crowd pleaser. That's why it's the number one shot in the country. It's also the number one shot in the country because fireball shooters, you don't need a shot glass. You just mm. crack those babies open. You shoot them back. And that thing goes down. Smooth. Jason, are you? You a big fireball guy? I am huge. It's the number one shot in the country for a reason. Just crack it and enjoy it. You can purchase fireball wherever you get your fine spirits. Wherever. Let's keep it moving. Perfect. To other news going around in the uh, in the NFL in the uh, the video game world, the Madden release. Madden. Yeah, my guy Josh Allen is on the cover of Madden Twenty Four. They posted nice. a, a cool side by side photo of. Josh in high school and Josh ironically wearing the same colors with the Buffalo Bills now as the uh, starting quarterback and the uh, nice. Madden cover E. Um, cool. Yeah, man. Congrats, Josh. That's a freaking cool. I mean, obviously, it's a dream come true to anybody that grew up playing Madden. It's pretty cool. Being honored enough and good enough to to bless the Madden cover. It's iconic. Um, first question, why the fuck aren't we on the cover? God damn. <laughs> why, have, why can we get some love? Well, you know, nobody likes us, man. We nobody wants us to do anything. You no, would have I, been uh, the first offensive lineman ever to be on the Madden cover. That would have been pretty cool. There's never been an O lineman on, like Orlando Pace, even dating back to then. That's a legendary O lineman, but no. Yeah, I mean, it would have been cool. Uh, but I honestly don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to be on the Madden cover. I always thought that was cool. I thought it was pretty freaking dope when Rob Gronkowski kind of broke that barrier, being the first tight end ever on the Madden cover. Thought that was pretty cool. Wouldn't mind following that guy's footsteps. <laughs> you know what I mean? For when's Super the last, Bowls when's the last later. time you played Madden? Um, I play it during the season. I play my player and just you. You still play Madden. Yeah, I still play my player. It's like a little wow. story mode. It makes me feel like I'm on a TV show. All right. When was the last time you watched Twilight? Two, two a week ago. <laughs> last Thursday. Well, technically, um, I finished it. I guess like Saturday or something like that. Well, thank you to our 92 percenters. We uh we have our own matting covers. You guys were kind hey. enough to. To draw up some uh, some batting covers on some edits. Me crying in front of Jason after the game, and Jason wanted it's to kill me. Cover. Not a cover. great cover. Um, and then <laughs> the Madden, the Madden we deserve. Me and Pat um, at the podium at the White House on the front hey, lawn. That, that doesn't even have anything to do with me. It has nothing. I thought to we were do, doing like brothers. Yeah, it has did nothing they, to they do with Madden. Pat's your brother? I guess he's kind of like your brother. We were on the uh, the official release video that Madden put out that I actually posted. We did well. make the video, both we of us. We made the video, both of us. So did. that was nice of them. Although they did make me shorter than Devontae Smith and skinnier. <laughs> it's Devontae funny. Smith looks that's, like Megatron. That's one thing that I, I look like put too much thought into. Yeah, whenever they show like the players on the sideline, everyone's the same size. You know, or at least yeah. height. You know what I mean? Nobody's like yeah. they might have like the old lineman a little wider, and I mean you could tell the difference in the face and the skin color. But it's well, like no, we were on the field. I was doing my touchdown celebration dance, <laughs> and he was towering over oh, me. You know what it is? It's the dances. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, I just like that I'm now known as the touchdown dance guy because that was always Ooh. your thing, and now Ooh. it's Jason Kelsey's thing. I've never hit the uh, the body yada yada the. Uh -huh. um, a little Uzi Vert. Yeah, I haven't hit that it's one. It's not yet. called that. Apparently, somebody told me it was called something else. But we're clueless. Um, but yeah, thanks, Madden. Ooh, Trap. they're showing Ooh. overall rating overall for you. Rating of ninety nine as an as a superstar X Factor with a vertical threat archetype. Archetype, and has a long stride, high and high. tight running style. Man, they're starting the to get fuck real specific in this fucking about? game. What is any of this? I'm so confused. Must be the new uh, new versions of the game. 
long stride, high and tight. It just said that I'm 99. I'm overall. I'm 99 overall. You're 99 overall, which is, I think, I don't quote me on this. I think it's the highest score you can get. <laughs> but you are not a high and tight running style. You are definitely a long Dude, strider, I, but you I, are bent over and ready to change direction. So. For the Whoever. most part, I like to say there, but oh, it's all in one. So it's I'm a long stride and high and tight running style. Yeah, no, yeah. that's it's not I mean, your style at all. Yeah, no, I've never been much of a a galloper. I've kind of always stayed in my, you know, right here. Yeah, yeah. You ready to move, um, baby? Jason Kelsey has an overall rating of ninety three. Oh, oh, ninety three as a oh, that's superstar nice. with agile archetype. And has a default stride and an awkward running style. Okay, these aren't actual <laughs> oh, descriptions of our God. players that we're getting to. Default uh, stride we're just and awkward running style. Am I That's awkward when I run? Fuck. Um, Am I awkward running style? It's definitely not. Would you say like that's a, accurate? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's not like a yeah. It's a, it's, it's a fat like boy a, run. It's yeah, a fat it's boy not like run. A, it's, it's not a like a wall muscle, drill run. Muscle, it's a, it's you know, a right. awkward run. Well, did you you don't do your wall? You don't do your wall. If only I did the wall drills, I'd have a normal you'd running have style. Have a, a long stride and a high and tight running style. And you, my friend, you just don't you you don't practice your defaults. That's why you got a I'm default a, stride. I have a default stride, and I'm a default superstar at ninety three. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a vertical threat archetype? No, I'm, an, <laughs> I'm not. Like I, my game is not vertical at all anymore. I'm across the field kind of guy. I'm either going right or left. <laughs> if I can get you thinking right or left, I might I be able know, to sneak a ball that. downfield. But I yeah. just took that one. Yeah, no. Hey, it's good. No, I get what they're saying though because I can. I, I can. I you can, can get definitely go now. up and get the ball, and you and you get a lot of long catches. No, I think they mean so, vertical threat, as in like throwing the deep jumping ball it up, or like catching the ball and getting a like a big gain. I think that's what they mean by vertical no, threat. They definitely mean vertical threat, as in there's no way they're. That's what there's they're doing. There's no way though. they got me just out here mossing people still. Hey, All right, bet. here we go. Um, have you played as yourself in a video game? Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, I've definitely done it. I've played as a lineman, and I don't remember if it was NCAA or NFL Madden. Man, I'm really starting to sound old. But you could use, like, the little right stick and, like, hit stick people, and oh, yeah. you could just run down and block guys. And I was – I think I won the Heisman Trophy as an offensive lineman. The, but honestly, do. the early, the early like, 2000, or late 2000s and, like, early, like, 20-teens. Yeah. The best part of Madden were the mini games. I'm going to throw this out there. This is going to be super controversial. Madden is by far the worst sports video game. I'm sorry. It needs to be said. The NBA version video games are way more fun to play. FIFA is way more fun to play. And so is NHL. All three of those other major sports, way more fun to play video games on. It's a lot do it for of me. variables, man. It's tough. You got to just, you got to be into it, man. You got to be. Doesn't do it, it for me. It's. I mean, I enjoy playing. Well, what about the NHL? Dude, the NHL video game is a, is awesome. You can you you control like the right stick, come in and out. Like, which one do you like more? You NHL. Ain't got or... no, you ain't got no dangles. No, Don't act like you got some dangles. I mean, I haven't the... played in a few years because ever since I moved out here and have kids, I don't even have a console hooked up to my TV. But no, I. What about in in FIFA's the best one of all of them? Yeah, FIFA's FIFA's the best. So Madden, you get good at FIFA, man. Damn, that's funny. Madden is by far the worst sports video game of all the major sports. It's just a lot of variables, man. It's a lot of variables. It's hard to go. Take the you variables played, out. You haven't played the uh, the in the yard. You haven't played the new one. The in the yard is like playing like NFL Street. No, it's not. Otherwise, it would be the main one that's selling and bringing no, on all the big bucks. It's a part of Madden. That's what it's I'm like saying. In the, it's in the metaverse. You just go, you yeah. play. No, it didn't. Not, I'm Jason. I'm telling you, you'd enjoy it. But there's there's other arcade versions that have come out. No, that, it's not our. It's not an arcade version. You're just playing like a Madden, but it's in like in the backyard version, and you could do like other cooler shit, like pitch the ball cool ways and like throw it back. There's cooler plays. So they're like trying to make it like Blitz. NFL Street. Yeah, Street and Blitz is kind of like that. Yeah. I don't it's pretty know. sweet. I'm just I out. I'm out. Sweet. No, I hear it. I hear it. You are fucking out. 
you are not in. I still think Blitz is the greatest football video game of all time, right? No, NFL Street. Ooh, NFL Street's good. I just, yeah. I'm not going to say no to that. NFL Street was great. NFL Street was, it was the best. more. You could play, you it, play on it, so many different. You could play on different fields. Yeah, you know what I mean. You could. And NFL Street was better than NBA Street for some reason, and I don't really know how to explain that. But you're fucking way off by that. But no, I think and, NFL because, Street Volume Two was electric. NBA Street. Yeah, NBA Street Volume Two was the best. I never liked the NBA. Street. I liked NBA Jam more, but I did like mm-hmm. NFL Street. NBA Jam or NBA Hang Time, I liked the most out of all the NBA games. Two on two. I guess I just like arcade style games. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Nothing beats Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey 98, though. If you get your Wayne, chance, Wayne Brewski, baby. <laughs> do you remember the Olympics video game that was on Nintendo? It was fucking great. The worst. You could do this long ski jump, you have to time it up. Boop. World record! <laughs> Speed skating, R. The L- oh my gosh! R- I used to hate that L- shit. R L R L. That's how you know. That's how you know you just have way too much time on your fucking hand when you're. Well, yeah. I mean, I played these when I was a child, Travis. I played them when I was a kid and didn't have a job and wasn't doing a fucking podcast with my brother. Had no kids. What else is there? What other sport are we missing? Sport, dude. WWE. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't think that's a sport, but I mean, I'll put it in there. No, the new one is the new wave is MMA, UFC. UFC is good too. I think that's it for the video game talk. Yeah, didn't mean to turn into nerds right there, but man, I love video games. Last thing, some non-football news happened over the weekend at the Canadian Open. When oh, golfer yeah, baby. Adam Hadwin, <laughs> you can tell I didn't watch the Canadian Open, uh, was mistakenly leveled by security when celebrating Nick Taylor's win. Let's take a look at inside this tackle. This, I'm telling you that first of all, you got to see the putt. You got to see the putt just so you understand how, how electric, electric was. this entire like. Dude, look at this guy making was. immediate eye contact. Nobody's nobody tell. from Canada has won this tournament in like decades. I think that's and good info. Man, I want the security guard on my team. I know that. Look at that form. Oh my gosh. I mean, anybody can catch somebody when they're not expecting it. You know. Listen, I think if you go onto a, a green a... spraying champagne all over the place, you better be expecting anything. Oh, I'm anything. sorry. I'm celebrating. Well, we can't celebrate. You're going to tackle me because I'm celebrating? You're sp- he's spraying champagne all over the winner. Like he's like. <laughs> like he won it? Dude, you can't just do I that just, out I of feel nowhere. Like the security guard's just out of, out of line. No, dude. Because he doesn't know who that guy is. That can be yeah, any type but of he's patron. The only one. He's Did in he... jeans. You can't somebody, just allow somebody in jeans somebody. to storm a field <laughs> and friggin' spay an unknown substance on another golfer. I'm all behind. This is law and order at its finest. This is top flight security of the world, Craig. And he tackled him like he was Terry Tate, the loudest <laughs> linebacker. <laughs> dude, this get, is, I mean. How are you going to get fired on your day off, Craig? Dude, I'm all in on this. And look at the other guys help him up and apologize. He was the only one tackling him. He's the only one. None tackle- of the other security yeah. guards went after him. Listen, I'm all about it. You don't know who this guy is. People are storming fields left and right these days. He was, and I just like the look on his face. He was doing his job. He was look at him, the first, the first look before he even sees the guy. He's on the prowl, like a sec- top flight security needs to be. He's looking in all the potential bogeys, and he spots one, and he goes for him. Textbook, rap, drive. You didn't same see foot, the same you shoulder. Didn't, no, no, no. The most impressive move is the move to get around. You know what yeah. I mean? The Swim other people. Move. No, I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, this is like this is exactly how they teach Fletcher Cox to get sex. This is it right here. So you Swim. think that guy's played some ball? Ah! You think that guy's played some ball in his day? No, no question. Not a doubt in my mind. Uh, the Canadian guy. Spraying champagne everywhere. Was he Canadian or was the winter Canadian? I'm pretty sure they're both Canadian. So the the Canadian guy spraying. Nick Taylor Taylor's a Canadian name. Hadwin, one thousand percent. Hadwin, I don't even know what that is. (laughs) Neither did the security guard. (laughs) Dude, I wish. God, that's such a good job. I think it's it's a man doing his job. 
Adam, you get that opportunity again, man. I need you to start dodging and weaving and make it more of a scene. You know what I mean? How epic would that have been if he sinks a fucking hundred foot putt and as he's celebrating, the TV cuts to a pan out to see what's going on on the green. And you just see a guy spraying champagne getting chased down. Oh, man. Still electric enough to see him get tackled. But uh, yeah, shout out to Nick Taylor, man. Congratulations on bringing one home for the North, man. Hey, Dude, should golf allow contact? I no, don't I know how that would work. That's, that's the, we got the wrong. It's an interesting prompt. That isn't it. That I isn't like it. the idea I, I and think, the thought I think process. There should be some change to uh, to the PGA. I think to make golf more entertaining, the players should be heckling each other. I want to see Angel Reese esque trash talk in the PGA Tour. I want I want somebody in front of this Canadian guy's face going like this. And seeing if you can nail a fifty foot putt while that's happening right in front of you. That's right. She did do the she did the John Cena. That's all she wrote, folks. That's all we that's got for all you this she week. Wrote. That wraps up another episode of New Heights. Yee-hoo! Make sure you're subscribed to New Heights on the New Heights channel on YouTube so you know when all the new videos are releasing. Reminder to submit your videos if you want a chance to compete in the New Heights Beer Bowl at the Ocean yeah. Drive in Seattle City, New Jersey on June 28th. We're going to keep sharing our favorites in the upcoming episode, so you might make it on the show if it's a good enough video. Send your submissions to at New Heights Show or email us at newheightshow at gmail.com. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And what Jason always forgets to tell you guys is that there's $50,000 of a grand prize here on the line. So don't forget to submit so that you can get a chance of winning that money at the New Heights Beer Bowl. Hey, yo. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and still brought to you by our friends at Fireball. Fireball. I don't know if we'll ever not be presented by them. They (laughs) just keep throwing the fireball at us. Mm. The pound for pound undisputed best shot in America. That's right. Follow the show on all social media platforms, ladies and gentlemen, at New Heights Show with one S for fun clips throughout the week. And thank you to our production. Our crew is the absolute best. They are working their tails off to try and get us any kind of content that is useful and that we can actually use it jason just shits on it and every just time cut, and, and cutting out just all the content in. that we add in that doesn't belong in the show <laughs> which is about 90 very important job did you get a lisp there at the show close a little bit yeah i did you kind of my mouth, is you the new high my mouth show? Is <laughs> and thank you to the 92 percenters we love you guys until the next time peace <laughs>